Hello. Is this fine? Yeah, absolutely yeah. fine. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Floor is Go yours. ahead. So uh, we already talk about FFV1 a lot in the previous presentation. And I uh, will talk about FFV1 and Rocooked there. Not exactly on the project themselves, but about what we learned for uh, when we, we worked on that. So as a quick reminder, uh, FFV1 is a lossless video um, compression format. So uh, there is no difference between the input and the output of the content. It is not like uh, AVC H.264, uh, which uh, destroy a bit of the content for uh, optimizing the compression. It is open source. It is patent free. It is adopted by several archives, uh, including BFI. And so on. Um, the compression is pretty good, usually half of the content, a lot better than having directly some DPX files or having a zip file. And uh, there was a, a FFV1 standardization. So now uh, it is a standard. Uh, there was uh, FFV1 was selected to be standardized because it was pretty good already at the beginning. And so we were sponsored by the Preforma project, which by the way, uh, sponsored the, also the first No Time to Wait. So we are still uh, a bit, uh, we have still a bit of the Preforma project there with No Time to Wait um, uh, meetings. And it permitted us to review the main uh, encoder and decoder from FFmpeg. We also implement, uh, uh, um, coded an implementation shaker to be sure that uh, everything is fine. And we also reviewed and improved the FFV1 specification draft. So what we learned about that is that the standardization of a format is a very slow process. Um, the Preforma project uh, was there during three years, but actually it was not enough. We needed more. So we got an initial sponsorship, which ended an, at a fixed date and not when FFV1 standardization is finished. So we, we had to, to plan for that. Uh, we, we, we keep working on FAV1 standardization after the end of the sponsorship. Also, a lot of people uh, are involved and they are not always at full time uh, on that. It is sometimes a hobby or it is an extra time for a lot of people. So it is not something easy to, to have everyone working on that together uh, because everyone has different constraints. Uh, we were hosted by IETF for the standardization and IETF was very supportive. So again, thank you to IETF for helping us. And altogether, we were able to go to the end. And we, altogether, we discovered a lot of bugs uh, in the code. Uh, it is normal, totally normal. It, it is not because the product was bad in FFmpeg. It, is, it happens, there are a lot of corner cases. So we had to, to have some clarification about how to handle the corner cases. And um, Derek Butnis, Butnis was very motivated and for helping us to be sure that the specification would be enough for writing an FFV1 decoder. He wanted his own FFV1 decoder just for fun. It was presented in the last No Time to Wait. It was very good because uh, it was a very different point of view on the specification and we were able to catch uh, what was missing in the specification. Sometimes when we work too much uh, in the product, uh, in the specification, we miss some important point because for, for us it is obvious, but some, for someone uh, not in, uh, in it, not uh, focused on the specification, uh, this person may see, oh, something is missing. So it was very useful to, to have a standardization very open with a lot of different people looking at the specification. Now FAV1 is standardized uh, since this summer. So uh, we started uh, four or five years ago and uh, now it is standardized five years later. It, it was long, and but it, it is worth it. 
So what we learned is that it, uh, it is a very long process and uh, we need to keep up and at the end we have something. Now it is public, it is a standard. We forecooked, we, we based a uh, work uh, on FFV1, but we needed to to keep some DPX headers when we trans um, when we convert some DPX to FFV1 because some people were wanting to have uh, some um, to to be able to go back to the original D uh, DPX. So there is a Roku project for that. It is not uh, FFV1 is focused on the video content and Roku is focused on the metadata. So. But how Rokuk was born? Uh, well, it was during No Time to Wait. There was a talk with Reto about a missing piece between archive constraints and a good storage. In, archive, in archives, there was a lot of DPX, so it was a bit difficult to handle that. And for legal reasons or for technical reasons, uh, DPX were still needed. So for being in a mam and uh, for going uh, going in a mam and so on, uh, sometimes it was needed to go back to the DPX. But for the storage, it was not so useful to store the DPX because uh, DPX is not uh, optimized, so you, you can compress. And as we saw in the previous presentation, you can with FAV1, you can uh, keep some uh, money on your site because you don't have to pay for so much storage. But we need to start. And Reto offered the first sponsorship for the proof of concept. And then Rokuk is still alive. Why? Because other archives were decided to sponsor the product. And it is not only about money, it is also about time. For example, uh, BFI spent a lot of time on checking that everything is fine, uh, trying on with their files if there is a, a problem. And it is a matter of uh, all archives uh, working together. And the product starts from the needs from a couple of archives and now it is used by more archives and all the archives together were able to create this, pro this product. Me, I am just a developer. I don't need the tool, but you need this kind of tool. And it was just during a discussion uh, in the social networking saying, oh, we have an issue with DPX. What could we do? And now we have a product corresponding to the need of the archives. So it is what would happen if we would not have discussed about that during No Time to Wait or any other social event. We would not have found that different archives have the same uh, issues. And uh, it would have been a pity because uh, different archives have the same issue and we try to handle that. They pay a lot for the storage themselves on their side and they don't uh, get that if they put some work together, they could optimize uh, their workflow. And uh, it was good. The waiter decided, oh, okay, I put on the table some money for a proof of concept. And without that, we would not have started that uh, so easily. So it was a mix of everything so from someone who decided to start a project and then other people decided to follow it and to keep working on that. And at the end, we see that we are stronger together. <clears throat> so um, for that, uh, we, we, we worked on uh, of this project. So it was from the how we started. So it is also something we learned. How we started is very important. Now I, I would like to speak quickly about what about the developers. We decided to, to have an, a, a mix solution about how to, to sell it for some sponsors. So issue is that some managers don't like to pay for uh, something freely available, but we wanted to have it open source. So we have an intermediate solution and it, it works pretty well. It is open source, but the binaries are locked. So we still keep advantages of open source. So you can fork if you don't like how I, we work on our side. It is, it is totally open source, just that the binaries we, we provide are with a, a license lock. 
So it is a different way to, to make uh, a project sustainable. It, maybe it will not work for something else, but for us, for this project, it worked. Um, we learned also about uh, technical issues with DPX. Um, so it is not always the case, but sometimes the DPX have some padding bits and they are expected to be zero. So it is just need a base. Uh, it is for 32 bit boundaries. So it's just zeros usually. And FFmpeg, we use it, FFmpeg for the encoding, uh, legitimately ignores them. And we were at the beginning also ignoring them because in our tests, uh, these padding bits were always zero and it was costly to support something different. So we, we thought, okay, uh, the padding bits are always zero in our test. So it is okay to, to consider that it will be uh, always zero. But in practice, it was not the case. So we got a, a couple of users doing a lot of tests, checking a lot of the different DPX files from different scanners. So the, the test by users is very important in such, can, in such kind of uh, projects. And what we learned there is that we, ne we should never bet on the value of an input byte. It, 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 there will always be something uh, messy in that. So now we handle them and uh, it, it was more costly compared to what we expected, uh, but uh, we, we prefer to be uh, safe about that. And we handle all uh, the padding bits. Uh, it, it is not always, but it happens. Um, we also learned that uh, we should be very careful and when we use the uh, external project and in that case for us it is ffmpeg sometimes it does not work as we expect so we start the reversibility data for a cooked in uh, a matroska attachment so it is very small content but sometimes it becomes big Two minutes. Um, Two yes. okay yeah and we um, we didn't test that. Uh, we, we tested on a lot of files, but uh, we didn't uh, create ourselves some cases with very big attachments. And uh, there, there was having a bug in FFmpeg with attachments more than one gigabyte. And it was uh, cutting completely uh, the attachment, breaking the re reversibility. So, with also uh, some checks from the users, thank you BFI mainly, um, we learned that we need to test the reversibility of all files because testing only on a couple of files would not be enough. And we always have a corner case we, don't, uh, we didn't check. So it is very important to test the reversibility uh, in any case. Never trust a process. Um, because uh, it, it, something can change in the meanwhile. In, in that case, it was um, a lot of padding bits uh, we had to store and uh, they were not zero. And, it, and we didn't expect that. And uh, we didn't uh, check that. And it was very important to check that. So now we implemented a, a automatically, an automatic check in, uh, in the file, in the, in the product. So it is slower, but we learned that it is, that speed should not be prioritized over check. And now we are thinking it is an option for the moment, uh, but we think to enable it by default because maybe, yeah, we, we should say, even if there is 0,001% of risk to have a, a problem, it is better to double check. So what we learned there is we need to, to we should not say then say, oh, the risk is very low. We don't test everything. We need to test everything. Jerome, yes. it is time. It is, uh, it time. is time. Yes, it and is I time. finished. <laughs> I have, oh, I have okay. finished. Okay, great. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, I'm sorry, there's not much time left now mm. to ask questions, but there are a few questions in the chat. So perhaps you can look at them and answer them in the chat. Yes. And we thank you so much for your presentation. Very interesting uh, topic.